Let's go into a little bit more detail about what fields and interlacing are. Now, when you see an image, you probably think every pixel in that image came from the same point in time. That would be the case in, say, a photograph. This is referred to as a whole frame image, or sometimes as a progressive scan image. Progressive scan refers to the way that, say, a computer screen is drawn. It starts at the very top, draws a line, draws the next line down, the next line down, and progresses until it reaches the bottom. It goes back to the top and draws the next image. Well, televisions are different. They actually play back alternating lines. They draw a line, but then they skip the next line. They draw the third line, skip the fourth line, draw the fifth line, and continue that way onto the bottom. Then they go back to the top and fill in the alternating lines, the second line, the fourth line, the sixth line. Each alternating set of lines is referred to as a field, and each field was actually captured at a different point in time, as if you took two pictures really close together and then just took every other line from each photograph. You're probably familiar with the concept of frame rate. NTSC video runs at 29.97 frames a second. Well, fields are taken at twice the frame rate. This is sometimes called the field rate. In the case of NTSC video, the field rate is 59.94 fields per second. Those fields are then woven or interlaced together into what we call an interlaced frame. Now here's some video of a motocross rider. Let's go ahead and pause it for a moment and look at fields. These thin little lines, or what I call comb teeth, are the telltale sign that you've got interlacing. It's because in one field, one point in time, this guy's back is in one position, and another field, a little bit later in time, his back is a slightly different position. And those two different points in time have been woven together into this frame. It's really obvious here in the background. Remember how fast these people were moving by? Well, in one field, this guy's standing here. One field later, he's standing over here because the camera's moving so quickly. And again, you can see these alternating lines. One sets from one field, and the other sets from a different field, different point in time, woven together into one frame. Video that contains fields goes by a couple different names. Interlaced video or field rendered video are the most common terms. Now the next most important concept is field order. Which field in a frame came first in time? We usually define those in terms of upper field first or lower field first. Now say that the very first line came from the earlier point in time, then the next line below it came from a later point in time. That video would be called upper field first video. On the other hand, if the second line, or the one below the first line, came first in time, and then the top line actually came a little bit later in time, that'd be called lower field first video. Now some systems use terms odd and even to refer to field order, but that's quite ambiguous because you don't know if that first field is numbered zero or numbered one, an even number or an odd number. Different software, even from the same manufacturer, can interchange whether even or odd means upper or lower. So we're going to show you a little bit later on how you identify what is the field order of your system. Okay, why are we going through all this trouble in the first place with interlaced video? Why isn't everything just progressive scan? Well, it's an old legacy left over from early televisions. The problem was the phosphors used in the screens of the early TVs couldn't hold an image very long. If they drew every single line from the top to the bottom, the progressive scan way, by the time they got back to the top, the image would be too dim, and you would have a noticeable flicker as it went back and refreshed the image. They came up with the idea of doing alternating lines. You reached the bottom twice as fast, went back to the top, and started filling in every other line. This made the flicker not quite as obvious. This has a couple side effects. The positive side effect is that playback has much smoother motion to it, because you, in essence, are sampling time twice as fast as normal. The downside is, is that each field, each point in time, only has half the resolution of the whole frame. Now, another very important concept is that computers and print media don't have interlacing. They don't have fields. So if we're trying to create video, not to be played back on the TV, but instead to be played back on a computer screen, or to be as part of, say, a print ad, we don't want to see interlacing. We want to find a way to get rid of those fields. So we need to talk about both preserving, but also removing interlacing.